This is the sixth and final section of chapter 11 on vectors and here we're going to be looking at modeling with vectors. Now the first thing is that we can use a vector to model a displacement. Now displacement is just how you get from one place to another like three squares up to two squares across that type of thing. If we do Pythagoras on the displacement if we work out the magnitude of the displacement we get the distance. We can also use a vector to represent a velocity, to model a velocity. And if we find the magnitude of the velocity, we find the speed. In other words, if we do Pythagoras on these values, we'll get the speed. Example 19, a girl walks two kilometers due east from a fixed point A, a fixed point O to A, and then three kilometers due south from A to B find the total distance traveled. Right, let's draw a diagram. So this girl starts at this point O. Uh, she walks two kilometers east, so we'll call this way east to the point A. And then from there, three kilometers south to B. So I'll put three kilometers there. Is it really that easy? Total distance just two plus three, five kilometers. Okay, part B. At the position vector of B relative to O. Now what's that? That's this. The position relative of B of B relative to O. So that is OB. Now to get from O to B, what do we do? If we use the unit vectors I and J, like this, then it's going to be two across, three down. So two i minus three j kilometers. Doesn't say we need to use i and j. So we could give our answer instead as two negative three as a column vector kilometers. Part C, we want to find the length, the magnitude of OB. So we do Pythagoras on these values here. So it's going to be the square root of two squared plus negative three squared. So that's square root of four plus nine, which is root 13. Now we probably don't want to leave a distance in kilometers. So we probably want to um, change that to a decimal. Um, so yeah, uh, distance given us as, as uh, probably not particularly helpful so if we give it as 3.61 kilometers and that's three significant figures and part d the bearing of b from o so if we've got bearings we need a north line so there's my north line there the bearing of b from o now that's this angle here there's the bearing so I want to find this angle and then add 90 to it to get the bearing. So I'm going to start by finding the angle AOB. So the angle AOB is going to be equal to, since this is the adjacent and that's the opposite, the tan inverse of 3 over 2. Tan inverse 3 over 2. And that is... 56.3099 and so the bearing I need to add 90 to that so it's going to be 90 plus this 56.3099 so that will give us 146.3099 now bearings only given us three figures not even one decimal place so the free figure bearing is going to be one, four, six degrees. Example 20. In an orienteering exercise, a cadet leaves a starting point O and walks 15 kilometers on a bearing of 120 degrees to reach A, the first checkpoint. From A, he walks nine kilometers on a bearing of 240 degrees to the second checkpoint at B. From B, he returns directly to O and we've got a couple of things to find. So the first thing we want is a diagram. So let's have our point O 
here where we're going to start walks 15 kilometers on a bearing of 120 degrees so we're going to need a north line if we've got bearings so there's my north 120 degrees um, that sort of this direction maybe and then they reached a the point a and this is a hun this is 15 kilometers and this is a bearing of 120 and then from a he walks nine kilometers on a bearing of 240 right so we're going to need another north line here like this and we want to go around 240 degrees so that's going to be something like this 240 so um, we'll mark that in this is 240 degrees here uh, to the second checkpoint at B so this is the point B and then it says from B they return directly to O so that's their return path there so that way 15 kilometers the from A to B that is nine kilometers and then return back to O and in part A we want to find the position vector of a relative to O, so we want to find O A. O A. So often, if we can change things into right angle triangles, it helps us to use trigonometry a lot more uh, easily. Now, if I were to draw a straight line across here, that means that this is a right angle. That means this is 30 degrees here, and I've got like a right angle triangle. I can work out this position how far across and how far down from this point so i'm going to draw that diagram out so we're just going to be looking at this triangle here so this is o this is a and we know that this is 15 15 kilometers this is 30 degrees because we've basically cut off the 90 and we want to find this length here which we'll call x and this length here which we'll call y right so let's start by finding x here so x is the adjacent to the angle we've got the hypotenuse and we've got the um, this angle here so x once we do our formula triangle is going to be equal to 15 times by the cosine of 30 and then y which is the opposite so we've got the opposite in the hypotenuse will be sine so that'll be 15 times the cosine sorry not the cosine i just said sine the sine of 30 so 15 times sine 30 Okay, so if we write down the exact value then, OA 15 cos 30 is 15 root 3 over 2. So we're going to use the I and J notation, 15 root 3 over 2, which is almost 13, 12.99038. Um, and then we know it's positive because we're going that way. Now this one is going to be negative the i part and we'd only get that really from the diagram. So minus now 15 sine 30, which is 15 over 2. So we'll have 15 over 2j. Then in part b, we want to find the length of the vector ob. So let's have a look at where that is in the diagram. We want to find this length here. Now I've got two sides. If I can find this angle here, I can use the uh, cosine rule. Now I think I can find this angle here because here I've got like these complementary, supplementary angles. Um, the north lines are parallel. So this angle around the top here, that's got to be 60 degrees because they always add up to 180. So there's 60 degrees there. I've got angles around a point. So I've got 60 and 240, so that makes 300. So this angle has to be 60 degrees. So we'll put in 60 degrees there. So I've got everything I need now to use the cosine rule. Two sides, 
and the angle in between to find the length of the other side. Right, so um, OB squared is going to be equal to A squared plus B squared. Sorry, B squared plus C squared, so 15 squared plus 9 squared, or the other way around, minus 2 times 15 times by 9 times by cosine of 60. And that gives exactly 171. So OB is going to be square root of 171. And um, that's 13.0766. Since we're given the distance, kilometers, uh, three significant figures. So 13.1 kilometers would be the length of OB. And we'll just put like a, a little arrow showing that we've worked out that length there. Part C, we want to work out the bearing of B from O. So we want to work out this angle here. Now don't go by the diagram and say, oh, well, it looks like 180. We've got to go from the calculations. So we've got this is 120. If we can work out this angle here and add it to a 120, we've got our bearing. Now we'll use the sine rule because we've got side angle pairs. We've got the length of this side here, which is exactly root 171. And we've got the length of this side here. And so we can find this angle. So we'll start with the um, bit of the sine rule that we know, the pair that we know. And the pair that we know is the 60 and the root 171. So since we want to find an angle, we'll put the angle at the top. So it'll be sine 60 over the length of that side, which is root 171, equals the sine of that angle at the top that we're trying to find, that's angle AOB. So angle AOB over its opposite side, which is nine. Right, so if we work that on our calculator, that will give us the sine of that angle, AOB, as 0 0.5960313 blah, blah 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 so we'll do the sine inverse of that uh, number and we get 36 let's write the angle angle aob is 36.5867 now the bearing we need to add 90 to that sorry 120 so it's going to be 120 plus the 36.58 now when we give our bearing remember it's three figures so we'll round that to 157 so one five second our three figure bearing for that and that's also uh, three significant figures in this case then lastly in part d we want to find the position of b relative to o now to help us i'm going to draw out this part again and i'm actually going to exaggerate things a bit more because it's going to be quite difficult to see what's going on so i'm going to draw the north line at o here which we've got on our diagram already but i'm just going to move B across because it's difficult. We're going to have like little tiny angles. It's going to be difficult to see. So this is O. I'm going to basically move B all the way over here. Remember, this is just a sketch so that we can get the angles on with our north line here. Now, what have we got? Well, we know the length of this side OB we worked it out. That's root 171. So let's put that on. So root 171. And then what we're going to do is always going to turn this into a right angle triangle here. Because if we can find this angle, which I think we can find quite easily, then we can find the position of this point. We can work out how far across, how far down from the origin. Now let's have a look where this line appears in this diagram. It's this line here going across. Is it possible to work out the angle from here, that line going across around to be this angle here? And it looks slightly different, but basically, it's it's this isn't it 
yeah that line there what's this angle well if this was 120 round to here and this is gone straight across well then this is 90 then this little angle here is 30 so it's going to be 30 plus whatever this is now we worked this out didn't we that was angle AOB this 36.5 or 36 let's call it 36.6 .6. so this whole angle is 30 plus 36.6 so this angle here 30 plus 36.6 that will give us 66.6 uh, .6. so we'll call it 66.6 .6 degrees so we want to find x here and we want to find y here let's do the working over here so x here adjacent we've got a hypotenuse is going to be equal to root 171 the hypotenuse times by the sine of that angle so let's call it 66 point six or we could call it sixty six point five eight six seven if we want to be super accurate we probably don't need to be and y so this length here now remember it's going to be negative isn't it when we write it down the answer is also going to be root one seven one times by now I've just realize this sign here should be cos just call it in time so cos and this will be sine and sine of the same angle is 66.5867 so let's work out then our values of x and y so x works out to be 5.1961 and y is 11.999999 here like this so let's give our answers to three significant figures so the position vector of b relative to o given an ij notation um, three significant figures will be 5.20i and then the next bit just becomes 12.0j and that's three significant figures so let's just highlight that answer before moving on. So you should now be able to do exercise 11F on pages 250 to 251 of the textbook.